Alex McCusker. I'm here in the new incubator space at GW, and I want to take a few minutes and walk you through the basics of the use of the business model canvas. The business model canvas is the current state of practice, the most common way to specify your business model. And remember, uh, for those of you who are working on new ventures, your venture is really just a temporary organization in search of a business model. So the first thing you want to do is get your business model right. And that requires a couple of things. Writing it down using the business model canvas and then testing and iterating on your business model uh, by talking to customers. So let's hit, just go through the nine elements of the business model canvas and just make sure you have a good sense of, of what kind of information you should put in the, in the canvas. The two elements that are the most important are value proposition and customer segments. Those are foundational, so you want to really work hard to get those right. And in fact, if you don't have those right and they change out from under you, you're going to spend some time and waste some time in your venture. So my strong advice to you is work hard on getting those two elements of the, the business model canvas uh, and your business model correct. Typically start with customer segments, so who are those folks? who are the beneficiaries of the product or service that you're going to provide. They should be people, so avoid the temptation to, to, to call, talk about companies. So AT&T is not a good uh, uh, customer, uh, customer segment. Uh, the CIO at AT&T or product manager at AT&T, so job functions would be good, are the kind of people, categories of people you should be talking about. You also want to segment your, your customer segments as best you can. So try to be as precise as you can about them. Think about demographics like age and size, race, uh, job functions that they have, income, geography, where they live, male or female. Uh, try to put as much edges around the customer segments as, as you can. And you're likely to have multiple customer segments. In fact, it'd be unlikely that you have only one. So think about, um, especially in multi-sided markets, if you're uh, um, doing some kind of a networking app um, you might you need buyers and sellers. And so uh, a prototypical example is Google. Right? Google needs eyeballs. It needs people visiting the website to do search, and, and they do so for free. But then it also needs the advertisers who, who want to uh, post ads on Google. So Google has two very distinct customer segments, and you are likely to have multiple customer segments. Now, for each customer segment, you want to specify a value proposition. That is, what is the benefit that your product or service brings to those the customers in the segment? Um, the closer you can get to dollars and cents in, in defining your benefits, the better. Um, but the typical things are save time, save money, um, also uh, drive increase revenue, reduce costs. Uh, those sorts of things make good value propositions. They don't have to be uh, so quantifiable, though. A lot of times, the value propositions are intangibles. Things like uh, making people feel comfortable, making them feel safe, making them feel good about themselves. Um, lots of value propositions are built around brands that, uh, that make people uh, feel happy, feel content, uh, feel loved, feel connected. Um, hard to quantify those in terms of dollars and cents, but they can make very compelling value propositions. So get those two things right. After that, work on the other elements. Channels is how you touch customers on a regular basis. Typically that's sales channels, uh, it might also be maintenance channels, uh, it might be distribution channels. If you have a hard product, how do you get your product to uh, the customers? If it's a web product, then typically that sales channel is going to be through the internet, through a website, through a portal. But if you're selling uh, uh, kombucha, then you need a, a sales channels through um, distribution through supermarkets or maybe through health food stores and the like. Right? Customer relations is very much like you would, what you would think of as marketing. It's how do you get, keep, and grow customers. So think hard about how it is you're going to attract customers to your product, to your service, to your website, and, and write that down uh, in, in the uh, customer channels box on your, on your uh, uh, canvas. Now these elements on the right side of the canvas are the customer facing elements and they lead you to the revenue streams. And this is the list of, of items that, uh, ways that you bring money into the venture. Right? So you might sell a product or service, that's very straightforward. You might have a subscription to use a website. Um, you might rent something. 
Um, you might have a freemium model where people use your website for free for the basic service and when they like it and, and discover they want more, you can charge them a monthly fee or a subscription fee uh, to use the advanced services. But this is not an income statement, it's just the kinds of revenue, ways you're going to collect revenue. If you can be quantitative, it's good. So if you're going to charge a dollar uh, a month to use your website, or you're going to charge uh, $2.99 to download your app, um, be as quantitative as you can. Now, the other side, the left side of the canvas, is the operational and cost side. So the main one here is your key partners. So think hard about who, outside your venture, you need to have a relationship with, you have to have agreements with, to make your venture successful. Sometimes that's intellectual property, so if you need to license a technology from somebody, those would be a partner outside your venture. Um, uh, the next thing is the key resources. What are the things you need to own, have control of within your venture to make the venture successful? This might also be intellectual property. Uh, it's probably going to be human resources, so if there are people specific skills that you need, if it's web development or sales and marketing, uh, search engine optimization, uh, maybe it's a manufacturing skill, um, some kind of technological skill, that would be in the key resources inside the venture. Key activities is um, the, key, the short list of things that your venture has to do particularly well. So these are activities like marketing, like if, if, if again, you're competing on cost, maybe you have to be a low-cost manufacturer. If the product you're, you're, you're selling is being manufactured in the Far East, then a key activity for you might be your ability to import things cheaply and efficiently. So think about that small list of things that you have to do really well to make your venture successful. Now, these things on the, on the right side of the canvas lead to the cost elements. What are the key cost elements, three to five things, that are going to use up the, uh, the most of your cost? Again, typically it will be people, might be facilities, might be licensing. Some of you, I know, have complex um, regulatory uh, issues, and so maybe for you, legal costs fill into this category. But that, uh, again, is, the, is the, the items you need there. Now, here's how you use the canvas. Write things down. Write things down fast. Don't agonize over them. Get your canvas filled out. Write in bullet form, short, short items. And, but then go through the task of, of testing and revising. So if you think you have a customer segment with a value proposition, go find those customers, go talk to them, and go test that out on the value proposition. If you have a revenue stream where you think people will pay $2 a month to use your, your service, go talk to those customers and find out if they're willing to pay $2 a month. You get the idea. There are some tools that are useful. Uh, the Canvanizer website and strategize your website, have nice online tools that allow you to update your canvas easily, uh, print it, uh, save it, post it. Uh, they also have tools where you can you color code the customer segments and then when you apply a value proposition or a, or a customer relation item to that channel, you can carry the, custom, the, the color code through the, through the, the canvas. Um, and then on our website, newventure.gwu.edu, you'll see under the support resources Lots of other templates for business model canvas. There's a Word document, there's a PowerPoint uh, template, uh, there's a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet form that you can use. I mean, all of those are easy to use and available for you. And so uh, find some tools to help you make, uh, make the task easy. Remember the trick is to get, get something written and then test and iterate until you refine it and refine it and get a business model canvas that you really like. Great. Thanks a lot. Good luck. I look forward to seeing you at the next workshop.